established by C and omega, you take C cross omega, you'll get a vector that points perpendicular to the plane established by those guys. You can see it's perpendicular to those guys. That's C cross omega, okay? And then, okay, so that's one vector. That's the first part. And then plus P omega. P omega is omega times P, so it points in the same direction, but it's a different length. Okay, so if you add this plus this, you get V. Okay, so that's a graphical depiction of V, and let's just call this angle here theta. We haven't defined that anywhere. And then P is the pitch, okay, which I always draw near this squiggly thing. Okay? Okay, so just graphically, we know that the magnitude of V times cosine this angle is going to, you know, magnitude here times cosine this angle is going to be this length, which is P omega. P times magnitude of omega, okay? Okay, so these, this is a scalar uh, equation here. So we put these absolute values, you know, the magnitudes of them. Then let's write something else that's true, just randomly. You know that omega dot v, just from dot product definition, is the magnitude of this times the magnitude of that times cosine of the angle between them. And here's omega, and here's v, and so the angle between them is theta. Okay, so that's the angle between them, cosine theta. It's the same theta as that. Okay, and then we also know omega dot omega is just magnitude of omega times magnitude of omega. Of course, uh, it'd be cosine zero, which is one, right? All right, so, so that's that. So with these three things, you can see, like, look at this. If you take that, plug it in there, then it's just that, and then it's P times both of those. So it's really this dot this equals this dot this times P. So you can divide that, now you say P equals this. Okay, so basically if I give you just the, you know, the, the, this 6 by 1 vector, I can take the top three components, dot it with the bottom three components, and then divide it by the top three components, dot it with themselves, and I'll know the pitch of this screw. So now we've gone from omega and v to p. Okay, and let's do an example of that. Say I give you a twist of this. Uh, again, I, I probably should have put uh, units in there, but um, I'm just giving you the numbers. Say there are any units. Okay, and um, let's uh, identify omega is the first three, and V is the last three, okay? And then we'll just plug it in this equation. What is omega dot V? Put me on pause and check, check yourself. Um, it would be zero plus two plus zero, so that's two, okay, on top. And then what's omega dot omega? Well, it's one times one is one, two times two is four, 0 times 0 is 0, so 1 plus 4 is 5, and that's what it is. So 2 over 5 is the pitch of this twist. Okay, and there's always one correct pitch. And, that, and that, since that pitch isn't 0, you know it's not a rotation. And since that pitch is not infinity, you know it's not a translation. So you know it's some uh, screw. The whole world here is rotating around uh, some screw with a pitch of 2 over 5. Okay? Uh, again, I, I probably should have done units on this. This would be meters per radian is what it would have to be, okay? Okay, so now, okay, so, so, and of course we can find the omega. It's just the first three components. So if I give you this twist, we know this, we know this, and we know this. What are we missing? We don't know C. We don't know the location. We know, we know the magnitude. I mean, well, the, the magnitude of this is, is going to be right, 1 squared plus 2 squared square rooted, so the magnitude is going to be square root of, of 5, right, and the direction is defined by this, and the pitch is this, but where is the location vector? Well, um, we can also get that from math, just working backwards. Um, remember cross product math, if you didn't know cross products, I'm about to teach you here. C cross omega is, if you, if you put the unit vectors i, j, and k, that's in the x, y, and z direction, and I put all the components of C, C, X, E, Y, C, Z, omega, X, omega, Y, omega, Z, and then do this thing where you cross this out, times these two, and then minus it from those two, that's the Y component, and then subtract, cross these out, do that times this, minus that times this, that's the J component, and then cover that up, plus that times that, minus that times that, that's the K component, okay? That's, hopefully that's just a little review of cross product, okay? Okay, and then we can say, so th these are the x component, but there's another part of the x component. There's p plus omega x. So check it out. Vx equals all this stuff plus p omega x. Vy is all this stuff plus p omega y, and, and so on and so forth. 
Okay, so if this equation is true, which it is by definition of that, then let's pull out in matrix form. Okay, can you see how if I take these omegas and times them by that, see omega xp, okay, is that, minus cz omega y, is that, uh, plus cy omega z, cy omega z equals vx. Okay, so take that and multiply it in there equals that, take that and multiply it in there equals that, take that and multiply it in there equals that, and we'll, we'll make these equations. So we're just turning those equations into a matrix form. Okay? Now this is very valuable. You'd want to write this down or memorize this matrix for uh, an exam. Okay? Uh, and so what you do is if I gave you this, um, remember we found, you know right off the bat, omega is the first three. Okay? That tells you the magnitude and the direction of it. Okay? You know V is that, even though we don't really care about V, but we need it to find everything else. Uh, in fact, we needed it to find the pitch is that. Okay, but now we write this, this equation from our little cheat sheet that we just derived. And now we can plug P in, it's 2 over 5, and we can plug in omega 1, 2, 0, and, and V, 0, 1, 3, and we get this. See, there's the 2 over 5, there's 1, 2, 0, 0, 1, 3. Okay, and now what we just need to find is these C values, the C components. Okay, well you can do that by, let's just multiply these back in. You find if you multiply that by that and it's set equal to 0, you get basically 2 over 5 minus 2z equals 0. And if you solve that, you get cz equals 1 over 5. Okay? You also, by the way, get that again by doing the second equation. You find cz plus 4 divided by 5 equals 1. And that gets CZ equals 1 over 5. So you, you prove this multiple times. So this is not negotiable. That's what CZ has to be. But then multiply this into that, the final one, and you get this equation. Okay, so that tells you that C, you know, the, the, first of all, the Z component has to be 1 over 5, but CX and CY can be any value as long as they follow this relationship. So just to make your life easy, you might as well plug in 0 for CZ or sorry, for CX, that goes to zero, and then CY equals negative three. But again, remember the C, there, there's not just one correct answer for C, there never will be. C is always the vector that points from the coordinate system to any point along the, the twist line of action, okay, or the axis about which it rotates, okay, uh, or screws about, right? And so, you know, there may be some values that are set in stone, like in this case, one over five, CZ, but then, you know, you just plug in whatever number you want for CX or CY and solve for the other one that it can be, and that will be an acceptable one. You just have to find one, right? If you find one C value, you've got it made, okay? So that's how you go from me giving you a twist vector to finding the omega, the V, the P, and the C, or AC that is acceptable, right? Because there's, there's not just one ever. There's infinite ones, right? Okay. All right, so that's how you construct and decompose a twist vector. Okay, so now uh, what I'm about to teach next is, is probably the hardest thing to understand of the entire course. Okay, so you may want to put me on pause and go back and review everything I've taught up to this point so you really understand what a twist is. Um, but uh, even then, you'll probably want to hear this section multiple times. Okay, but it's, it's very important to understand the derivation. Um, of this, and if you understand the derivation of this, you understand everything I've taught, okay? Okay, so again, a review, okay? This is a twist, um, this is a, a screw line, uh, okay? That's the line of action of the screw, okay? It's, um, it's defined with respect to this global coordinate system, okay? And, and with respect to this global coordinate system, uh, the top, you know, this is a, this is a mathematical vector that's a six by one vector where the top three components are the angular velocity components defined with respect to this and the bottom three are the linear velocity or translational velocity components with respect to this telling you how this rotates and how this translates as everything in this world screws about this green line of action okay and it's constructed with a c location vector that can point anywhere and remember, this C vector is defined with respect to X, Y, and Z. There's some C, X, C, Y, C, Z. 
And same thing with omega. There's some omega x, omega y, omega z defined with respect to this. And it has to point along the direction of the axis. And its magnitude is the magnitude of the twist vector. If you pull it out, you remember these are uh, unit vectors n. You just pull out this magnitude. That's the angular speed that it rotates around that. And this is the pitch. Okay, And together they, they get that. Okay, So that, that's a nice review of everything I've taught there. Okay, Now, say though, you know, if I gave you this twist, we know the three rotations and three translations of this point as it screws around this line. But what if what we wanted to know are the three rotations and three translations of this point defined with respect to this new primed coordinate system? So see, this is x prime, y prime, z prime. And again, it has to follow the right-hand rule. It always does. Okay? But, but say you want to find an x component, a y component, a z component for omega, and then x component, y component, z component for v okay, of this guy as it screws around the exact same uh, screw line with the exact same uh, characteristics, the same speed, the same direction, the same pitch, everything. Okay? Well, that's really useful because oftentimes you know, someone will just give you the twist vector and you know the three rotation, three translations there, but you don't care about those. You want to you want to find them for a different point, defined with respect to a different coordinate system, and and how do you do that, knowing that the whole world is screwing around this line? Okay, well, let's just do some random math here. Um, so that's the objective. That's where we're going, but um, it's not going to be clear how we're getting there just yet. So we're going to do some random things. Okay, first, what we're going to do is we're going to find a few vectors. Okay, we're going to find a new location vector L that points from this coordinate system to that coordinate system that we care about. Okay? And um, it's going to be defined with respect to this coordinate system. So there's LX, LY, LZ within a 3 by 1 vector that points from there to there. Okay? All right. Then we're going to define some unit vectors that correspond with the new axis, that the prime axis, or the prime coordinate system. But they're going to be defined with respect to this guy. Okay, so n1 has to point, it's collinear, it's pointing in the same direction as x prime, but its, un, its components are defined with respect to this x, y, and z, and its, its direction obviously points that direction, but its magnitude better be 1. Okay? And it's got to go with x, and then n2 goes with y, and n3 goes with z. Okay? And again, they're all unit vectors, all magnitude 1, and they all point in perpendicular directions corresponding to x prime, y prime, z prime. And they're all defined with respect to this global coordinate system. OK? OK, so it's like, OK, well, why did we define those things? Well, these things are going to be the things that are defined with respect to this coordinate system that we're going to use to translate it into this new coordinate system, the information. OK, but again, let's keep doing some random stuff. You're not going to see where this is going. Let's just say we don't care about this screw right now, and we just want to find the three rotations and three translations of this point defined with respect to this point if the whole world were rotating around this instead, where this red rotation goes along the n1 vector we just defined with respect to this. Well, that's a rotation, so its pitch is zero. And we would basically do this. Just say the magnitude of it is omega x prime. That's the magnitude of that. Just, you know, just arbitrarily say that. And you see how we did this. The new c vector is l. And the new omega is n1, okay, whose magnitude is omega x prime. Okay, so do you see how that twist vector is just a pure rotation? Again, the pitch is 0 because it's a pure rotation. Um, that captures the top three components. The bottom three components would be the three rotations, three translations of this point if it were just rotating around that line. Okay? So you're like, okay, that's true, but what does that have to do with anything? Well, nothing yet. But let's, let's now def do the same thing on this one. Let's say the whole world were rotating around this axis. It corresponds with n2. And we want to define the three rotation, three translation with respect to this. Then we do it like this. And say we give it the magnitude of omega y prime, OK, because it's omega about this y prime. But it's n2, l cross n2 with no pitch. It's a rotation. Okay? Okay, then we do the same thing about this. We're rotating the whole world about this line going through n3. And we write it like that. Okay, So we've now defined three orthogonal rotations that, that happen to correspond uh, with the new coordinate system. But we're still talking about everything's defined with respect to this. 
and we're still looking at three rotations, three translations of that point as it rotates around all three. Okay? Okay, but now let's, let's go even further and let's say we only care about a translation in the direction of N1. Okay, then guess what? But and we're going to define it again all with respect to this. So since it's a pure rot translation, it's, it's magnitude of the top three components, angular velocity zero. Okay, its pitch is of course infinite, but we don't, we don't care about that because in its, you know, C vector, its new location vector is L. But again, it's a pure translation, so it doesn't have a location vector. So L cross zero, zero, zero is going to be zero, so it doesn't matter. And we've got that infinity times the um, zero, zero, zero thing. And so we get a, a, a velocity in this direction is defined by its magnitude is Vx prime and its direction is N1. Okay? Oh, by the way, I, I don't think I made it clear. Let me, let me actually go back. Uh, uh, yeah, I, I think I forgot to make one little point here. Yeah, back when I defined this velocity, okay, the magnitude of this guy, remember before the magnitude of all these things was magnitude of omega pulled out, and these are n, n, n for unit vectors. Well, because it's a pure translation, the magnitude is actually the magnitude of v pulled out, and this is all zero, and that's an n. Okay, so that, that's how you do that with uh, pure translations. Um, the, the magnitude of rotations and screws is always the magnitude of this, the top three. But when it's a pure translation, the magnitude of the twist is always the magnitude of the bottom three. Because the magnitude of the top three is zero, right? So you just pull that out, okay? All right, so let me go back here. Problem with having so many slides. Okay, okay, so we did those things. Okay, so we do this. Here, here we are. So that's the magnitude of it, which times by that, and times by that is zero anyway. So, but times by that, and it'll be the magnitude of that translation. Okay, now let's do the same thing in that direction. Okay, and again, we're just, we're just finding the translations of this point defined with respect to this. Pure translations, just give it a magnitude of Vy prime because it's in the Y prime direction. Zero, N2. And again, it's all defined with respect to this. Remember, N2 was, N3 was as well. Okay, we do the same thing there, okay? Okay, so why in the world did we do that? Well, this is the key equation, okay? You have to realize this was the sum of all six of those things we just did, okay? Here was the first rotation, sorry. Here was the second rotation, here's the third rotation. Here's the first translation, second, and third translation, okay? So we're adding all three orthogonal rotations plus all three orthogonal translations. And somehow we're saying, we're setting them equal to the, this twist, this green line. Now how does that work? Well, the, the realization you need to, to understand is um, every free body that's, un, that's not constrained, okay, possesses six degrees of freedom. Three orthogonal independent rotations and three orthogonal independent translations. And Basically, when there's no constraint, when there's just free to move with all six degrees of freedom, it can move in any way possible. Okay? It, it could screw about any line it wants, and screws capture every possible kind of motion, right? But, but the way you do it is if you linearly combine, if you, if you take all, all three rotations, and you take all three translations that are orthogonal about these coordinate systems, and you allow them to be any real magnitude, in other words, you allow omega x prime, omega y prime, omega z prime, vx prime, vy prime, and vz prime to be any, any combination, and you add them together, you can force them to be any twist or any motion you want, right? Because that's the whole point. If you have a six degree of freedom body, then that means you can combine all six degrees of freedom to get any motion you want. That's the definition of six degrees of freedom. You, you linearly combine degrees of freedom to get uh, other motions, okay? And so what we did here is we, we, we forced, we, we said, okay, this guy's gonna rotate around three axes and it's gonna translate around three axes and we don't know what the magnitudes are but we're gonna set them, you know, these magnitudes, we're gonna set them so that when we linearly combine them all together, this is literally a linear combination, linear combination is you take a scalar times a vector and add them together, Right? So when you linearly combine them, we set them so that they equal this guy, okay? which is defined by that. And again, all of this 
is defined with respect to this global coordinate system, the original one. Okay? And what we're after is wanting to find the magnitudes here, these six magnitudes, that when they all linearly combine equal that. Because once we find those six, we will know the three rotations and three translations of this new coordinate system. That's what they are. See, they're the, the prime. Okay? Okay, but before we jump to that and solve that, um, let, me, let me just define what the final twist is. Okay, the final twist T prime is going to be, by definition, you know, it, it's a six by one vector where the top three components, omega x prime, omega y prime, omega z prime, are the three rotations of this point defined with respect to this, this, and this, omega x prime, omega y, right? Um, a, a, a caused by the same screwing rotation, okay, of this, of this line. And the last three, Vx prime, Vy prime, Vz prime, are the components defined with respect to this new thing. They're the three translation of this guy also caused by the rotation, you know, the screwing about that green line. Okay? So, and, and, and notice, when we define it with respect to this coordinate system, we have a new C vector. It's, and it can be any vector that points from that guy to any point along here. Um, as long as it's defined with respect to this, it's got to be Cx prime, Cy prime, Cz prime defines this. This is a three by one vector. And it's, it, you'd think, well, it's the same omega because it points along the same direction, the same magnitude. But it, it's not. If you define the omega with respect to this, it's going to have different components than if you define it with respect to this. This omega prime is going to be omega x prime, omega y prime, omega z prime. That's what omega prime is. Okay? And so that's why, see, the top three is there, and here is that guy. And the bottom three right here is v prime. Okay? But it's vx prime, vy prime, vz prime. And it equals c prime cross omega prime plus, this is just a scalar. It doesn't matter what coordinate system it's in. It's just p. So it's p plus omega prime. You wouldn't do p prime. I mean, if you did, you could, but it's just P prime equals P. It always does. You know, just leave it as P. Okay? So hopefully you convince yourself that this is true. This is like the, this is the new twist that we care about. This tells you the three rotations, three translations with respect to this, you know, of this point defined with respect to that coordinate system, the new coordinate system. Okay? Okay. So if I've sold you on, this is the hardest equation to understand. And if I've sold you on this equation, this is just what it is by definition. Then we can solve for a given T the twist that defines this of this guy, we can find the T prime of the same twist in the new coordinate system. Okay? And the way we do it is, think about it, you pull out, you, you make a new 6 by 6 matrix called an N matrix, okay? Um, where, you know, the t this top three components is the 3 by 1 vector here is N1, you know, 3 by 1 vector N2, N3. N the, the zero vectors are 3 by 1 vectors, they're all zero, so this top right corner essentially makes a three by three of all zeros matrix. Okay? Here's your L vector cross N1. Again, this is the three by one vector, so this makes a three by one, three by one, three by one. So, so hopefully you see how that's a six by six matrix. Okay? And where in the world, and, and they're all defined with respect to the global coordinate system, the original coordinate system where we define T. There's no primes in there. And we got them, they're the exact same things as these. Okay? And you can see we pulled out these omegas that we care about and the v's, we pulled them out into t. So, so you can see t prime, which is that, notice the transpose, it takes it down like that, times this n matrix, the 6 by 6 matrix, the 6 by 6 matrix and the 6 by 1 matrix, times that by that, you can see gets that top equation where it equals t, okay, which is that. Okay? And these, everything in here, this is what we want to find. In other words, we want to find the magnitude of all six of these things that force the linear combination of all six independent degrees of freedom to equal the twist we wanted. Okay? And so hopefully you're convinced, if you know where we got n, and you can see how n times t prime, knowing that t prime is that, equals t, then you're golden, and all you do is you invert it, and now you get t times the inverse of n equals t prime, okay? So, whether you understood the derivation of that or not, what you do, anytime you find something, someone gives you a twist vector, in a reference frame you don't want, what you do is you 
with respect to that coordinate system, you point with an L vector to the new coordinate system, define the coordinate system's directions, n1, n2, n3, with these unit vectors, make this 6 by 1 matrix, invert it and times it by t, and out will come your three rotations and three translations with respect to the new coordinate system. Okay, I strongly recommend you re-watch that multiple times, but let, let me do an example to show how this would work, whether you uh, believe me or not. Okay. Okay, so say we have this example, again, where we have this, this old coordinate system X, Y, and Z, and it happens to be centered on this block. And, you know, if you go two over this way, one up that way, you have the location vector C, not C prime, you know, the location vector that points to a screw line that comes out at you with a direction perpendicular to the page in this X direction here, with a magnitude of two radians per second and a pitch of one meter per radian. Okay. And, um, you know, we, we were able to, uh, in the past example, find the twist vector of that using this information. And it, it basically helped us find the three rotations and three translations uh, of this point with respect to that coordinate system. Okay? But now say we don't care about those three translations and three rotations. We actually want to know as, this whole, as the whole world screws about this line with these characteristics, we actually don't want to know the three rotations and translation at this point. We want to know the three rotations and translation at this point with this new coordinate system where this is two meters down, two meters over. This is cocked 45 degrees. The new X prime is collinear or is pointing the same direction as the old X, but then Y prime and Z prime are there. We want to know the three rotations, three translations with respect to this. Okay? Well, we could use the, the approach that I just used with matrix transformations, of course, and we will, but let's, let's use the old school way, the previous approach. Okay, let's just, let's pretend we don't even have this coordinate system. Let's just take this coordinate system and define, you know, the C vector, the omega vector, the P vector, and do it, do it the old way, the, the way we did this example before. Except let's pretend this stuff doesn't exist and we're just doing it from this. Okay, okay well, the, the, the omega with respect to this is, it's still coming out of the page, you know, but it's, you know, in this direction, right? So two radians per second, that's positive because it's going... Uh, you know, they gave it two positives, it's going counterclockwise. It's coming out there. And uh, it, again, its components are zero, zero. There's nothing in those directions, it's just that. So that's the omega prime, okay? What's the C prime? Well, it's a vector that points from there to there, and it's defined with respect to this coordinate system. So first of all, what's the magnitude of this? Well, it's two up plus another one up, so that's three up. And remember, this is 45 degrees, because that's 45 degrees, and that's obviously 90 degrees. So this is 45 degrees. And so we would get, uh, you know, what component can point along there? Well, any A, right? It can come out anywhere we want because it can point anywhere along the axis. Okay? And then we go, uh, remember, remember the, the trigonometry rule of if you have a triangle, it's 45 degrees here. And then you think of another 90 degree angle here. You get a triangle there. That one's going to be 45 degrees. This would be 1, 1 square root of 2 uh, is the length here. So you, if you wanted to find this perpendicular length along this axis, uh, it would be 3 divided by square root of 2m. And then the z component goes from that point all the way up to there with perpendicular right angles. So you're finding the z component's also 3 divided by square root of 2m. Okay. So this is the C vector prime relative with respect to this guy. This is the omega vector prime relative with respect to this guy. Okay. And then the P, there is no P prime, it's just P, is what was given. And so if you take, if you, can, if you want to construct T prime, which is the, the twist vector relative with respect to this guy, the three rotation, three translations there, uh, you take the first three here of omega prime, there it is, and then you take C cross that, do that at home. You'll see the A will drop out. And then you add it to this times this, right? And you'll get these three. So check that. Remember, it's just C cross omega plus P times omega. And in this case, it's all the primes, okay? So this is the new T prime, which means these are the three rotations of this point relative to this. And these are the three uh, linear translation vectors, or <laughs> translation components of this with respect to this. Okay? As the whole world as everything screws around this line. Okay, so we could do that. Every, that I mean, that's one way to, to do it, is just 
um, you know, pretend they never gave us the original twist and just refine, you know, if, they, if I tell you the location of the screw and everything, just refine the C prime and omega prime and P of the new system and then construct the new twist.